Hello guys. Today we are once again in the machine lab to have a serious fun with this dissectable machine system. As already we have designed induction motor on this machine. We have designed DC machines, generator as well as a motor. Right now we are going to design a synchronous machine on this dissectable machine. So let's start. We're going to design the armature of the synchronous machine. Right now we'll be designing a two-pole synchronous machine. Later on we can design a four-pole machine. The same will be uploaded in future. So right now we'll be designing a two-pole synchronous machine. Rotating field winding and the rotating part of the synchronous machine upon which the field winding is wound is already here. It's already assembled on the shaft. But one difference uh, which will be here in DC machine, we have used these commutator segments. But since we are going to design a synchronous machine with a motor or a generator, so we'll be using now these two parts. You can see the slip rings are here. As already I have mentioned, these are the slip, ring, slip rings right, upon which the bracts will be contact, having contact. So we'll be using slip rings. Right? After that, the frame <coughs> upon which <coughs> the whole of the accessories will, will be adjusting is the frame. And these are the connecting wires. These are the brush holders having these carbon brushes. We are going to design a synchronous generator. will be requiring a mechanical input both synchronous generator as well as in uh, synchronous motor because a synchronous motor is not a self-starting machine it requires mechanical input initially so this is the mechanical input it will be coupling with the machine so let's start first to design the armature of this three-phase <coughs> synchronous uh, machine oil coil assembly uh, using this oil coil assembly we are going to design the armature of the synchronous machine you can see the coils uh, here are designated by the terminals you can see it's a coil number one. This is the start and end of this terminal. This coil number two, coil number three. Accordingly, we are having 12 coils. So we are going to design a two pole machine. And this is a three phase machine. Or So in every phase we are having, we'll be connecting four coils. Since we are going to design a two pole machine. So what we will do, we'll connect any two adjacent coils in series and their opposition of coils in series. And their combination will become one phase. Since the coils are marked with coil number Okay, we are uh, connecting coil number 12 and coil number 1 in series. For that, you can see the coil number is marked as coil number 12 and 6. The terms are designated as 12 and 6. 12 is the start and 6 is the end. You can see the coil number 1 and 6. This is the start, this is the end. Coil number 2, this is coil number 2 start and 6 is designated by end term. So let's start to design a phase of this synchronous machine. For that, what we will do, we will connect this coil number 12 and coil number 1 in series. For that, so let's connect the end terminal of coil number 12 with the start terminal of coil number 1. So what we have done, we have simply connected these two coils in series, coil number 12 and coil number 1. After that, what we will do, we will connect the end terminal of this coil number 1 with the start terminal of coil number 6. You can see you have coil number 6. Coil number 6 is here. This is the start and end. This is the coil number 7. This is the start and this end. So end terminal of this coil number 1 will go to the start of coil number 6. After that, what we will do, we will connect the end terminal of this coil number 6 with the start terminal of coil number 7. And what we have now, the end terminal of coil number 7, which is left to us, and the, and the, and the start terminal of coil number 12. So, this is how we have designed the R phase of this machine. Here we have connect two coils in series. We have connect two, two coils in series. So this will become, say, when you instead this is a two-pole machine, this is a north pole, and this will become the south pole. So this is the start terminal, and this is the end terminal. Depending upon whether we will connect for later it in star or in delta, and accordingly, we have to make the corrections. So we have done with the R phase. Similarly, we have to design another two phases, yellow phase and blue phase. We <coughs> so we'll make the, make the connections in a similar fashion. Suppose uh, I'm using um, coil number two and coil number three in series um, for this uh, yellow phase. Similarly, we, what we will do, we'll connect the end terminal of this coil number two with the start terminal of coil number three. So these two coils are in series. After that, we will connect the end terminal of this coil number three with the coil number, start of coil number eight, connecting coil number eight and nine in series. So at the end terminal of coil number eight with the start terminal of coil number nine, so this is the end terminal of coil number 9 and this will be the start terminal of this which is here the coil number 2. So here we are having with the yellow phase the winding arrangement is like this. Okay. So this will become say pole start pole at an instant this will become start pole. This is 
Similarly, we'll be designing the blue face. This is very simple but very interesting. How we can make a two pole machine. Later, I will show you how we, for the same machine how we can make it as a four pole. So we will connect the end terminal of coil number four and start terminal of coil number five. After that, so we are having coil series coil connection of coil number four and coil number five. The end terminal of coil number four will go to the coil number ten of start terminal of coil number. 10. After that, 10 and 11 will be connected in series by small jumper. So here we are having the end terminal, and here is in this long wire we are having the coil number four as start. So you can see almost our armature winding on this three-phase synchronous machine is done. These are the three phases R by P. These so these are the start terminals of the three phases, and these are the end terminals. So using these six terminals either we can connect the winding in series or in delta so i am connecting them in <coughs> star for that what i have to do i will show the end terminals of these three phases at a particular point at a particular junction so i'm shorting the end terminal of all the three coils r y b that will become the neutral point and this will remain the three phases <coughs> using this scheme so our armature is done the winding arrangement is done so now what we will do i will be adjusting this armature the synchronous machine in this frame let's insert this neutral point here so that screws gets adjusted up to a particular place so we have adjusted this armature in the frame right so we'll be fixing an allen key to adjust it so that it does not vibrate connecting this field winding you can see the rotating part of the synchronous machine inside this like this is done after that we have to connect this here this gets fitted proper, so that it gets fitted properly so you can see we have fitted the rotating part in this frame now we will tighten it using these screws we have to connect these brush holders and DC machine we have connected those at these Completed segments right now since we are going to design a AC synchronous machine. So we have to make use of these slip rings. So if I'm using this, I have to use this at the slip ring. You can see my shoulder connect this terminal position F. The similar way we'll be connecting this brush holder at another another slip ring part. Yeah, you can see. For in instance, this is the positive terminal and this will be become the negative terminal where you will be giving excitation, DC excitation to this rotor, rotating part upon which the field winding is wound. Since it's a synchronous machine, we will be having the stationary armature and rotating field. So the connections are almost done on the field winding as well as on the armature part. So the connections are almost done since we are going to design right now. Uh, synchronous generator three phase since uh, for the uh, generator we require a mechanical input so the mechanical input is so the mechanical input is provided by this machine which is a variable speed drive so we'll be coupling its shaft with this using this flexible coupling and see after that using an LM key to fix to tie this flexible coupling so the variable speed drive is coupled with this and you can lock it as well from this position lock it from this position as well so now we can see what we is left us is the three phases r by b so right now what we will see we'll see for a given excitation for a given excitation how the induced voltage change so that will be seen by connecting a voltmeter across it so we'll be connecting voltmeter across r and yellow phase keeping below phase as left that means we'll be measuring the line voltage right <coughs> now what we will do we will using this uh, this variable dc supply will be giving excitation to the field winding right so the positive of this dc supply will go here so i'll be connecting it at this and it will come in contact with the slip ring my slip ring to this field winding right and the another negative i will be connecting it via i'll be connecting it via ammeter to have drag on the 
will correct and the common of the uh, meter will go to the another brush contact terminal which via slipping will complete its path with the field winding mounted on the armature so almost everything is done now right now what we have to do we have excite <coughs> this variable speed drive and you adjust its speed say at a particular rpm that will be checked using this techo generator so if if we will run this machine at say at 1500 rpm since this is a two pole machine the output uh, for a given excitation we are going to expect should have the frequency of 25 hertz and if the same machine is the same designs we will run it at 8000 rpm for two pole machine the expected output voltage of a given magnitude should have a frequency of 50 hertz so what we will check we will check the output voltage the magnitude of the output voltage and its frequency at 1500 rpm which should be 25 hertz and we will check the output at 300 rpm 3000 rpm the magnitude as well as the frequency that must be should be output that should be 50 hertz because the synchronous speed ns is given 120 f by p so let's start a procedure so first we will give a uh, mechanical input to this generator so I'm, I'm running it at say right now if i am running it at 1500 rpm you can see here it's at 15 having a multiply out of 100 you can also check the rpm using this techo generator by coupling there you can see almost it's 1493, it's almost 50 RPM. Corresponding to this 50 RPM, we have given the excitation. We have given this mechanical input. We will set the excitation. We will be giving this excitation to see excitation. You can see the field current, it's reflected here. So if I am uh, giving a 3 ampere excitation to this field winding, corresponding to this field, you can see the line line voltage which is made in this whole filter. It's around, it's so around the 50 volt scale, so the line line voltage is around 40 volts. The magnitude of this voltage is 40 volts for this given excitation, 3 amperes. Since it's a two pole machine and we are running it at 1500 rpm, the magnitude of the output voltage must have the frequency of 25 hertz, which will be shown by this multimeter. So we'll be simply connecting a multimeter across and keeping it at frequency low. You can see it's almost 25 hertz output AC voltage, right? So now how to make this uh, output voltage of 50 hertz frequency for that? Clearly I have to either increase uh, the number of poles, I have to make the pole pair for the speed to 4 or either I have to increase the speed. Right now I cannot change the pole pair, that will take much more time for that I, what I will do. I will increase the speed up to 300 rpm. I will change, so for that I will first change the scale because the magnitude of voltage also increased. So right now I will increase the speed to 3000 rpm. Now I will check the induced voltage, you can see the magnitude of the induced voltage is also increased, but the frequency should be 50 hertz, you can check it's almost 50 hertz. So this is how you can design a synchronous generator, where you can get the magnitude and you can change the frequency either by changing number of poles or either you can change the speed of this by more. So this was all about how we can design a synchronous generator. Thank you. In the upcoming video, I will show you how we can design a synchronous motor. Thank you.